Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic on another cold morning in the uh, first week of January. And today's puzzle I'm looking forward to though. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. It's got a very interesting rule set. I do want to mention, as we always do, our apps which are available on the App Store, on Android and on Steam um, and are very popular. The latest Killer Sudoku is only about a month old at this point and we recommend them highly and the reviews are very good so give them a go the uh, killer particularly has some astonishing puzzles from some brilliant authors and by that i don't mean us um ours are all right but uh, some of the ones on there are just incredible now on patreon as well loads of extra content um normally two or three posts every month sometimes more uh, crosswords and the Sudoku hunt at the beginning of last month. Beginning of this month, we featured a January reward puzzle, which was a single Sudoku, uh, leading to an answer which you can send to us if you can solve the puzzle. And those people who've done it since the last time I read out names are Gary Chandler, Joe Chang, Rude Hendricks, Patrick McMahon, Harib Al Suck, Mikhail Wilford. David Vance, Aaron Spiller, and Bruce Carr. And um, amongst those, Gary Chandler, the first one, sent a very nice email saying that he felt the channel had been a wonderful diversion this year. He congratulated you, congratulated us, and thanked us for our efforts. Acknowledged it was no mean feat to produce, edit, and release a daily video each day. And that he thought, the audience is very appreciative of the dedication we've shown during these stressful times. What a very kind thought, and thank you. That does make it worthwhile when people say things like that occasionally so we are cracking on and i'm sorry the editing is sometimes not all that good but as gary points out we are doing one a day now this puzzle and i'm going to risk an editing fail in a moment uh because i'm going to show you the original file this was part of the secret center um i don't know what to call it not a competition or a anything like that, but it was just a, a bit of fun organized by some of the people on the Discord server for some of the setters on there to come up with an individual puzzle for one Secret Santa giftee and to send it to them as a Christmas present. And some, some of the puzzles look incredible. I haven't solved many of them. The one I was sent, I mean, I was, I was sent to, I've done one on the channel already, but uh, that was excellent. This one looks amazing to me, so I'm going to do it. And let's just look at what it looked like. This was for a uh, Discord um, guy called Glass90. And therefore, what was created for him was absolutely specific to him. It's a Glass90 sweeper puzzle. And you'll see in the preamble here, the final touches were made. And after hours of hand-blown artistry, the glass blower turns, bumps into the table, and the gift falls to the ground, shattering into nearly 90 pieces. Now there's broken glass everywhere. Watch a step. You scan the floor and notice that each piece is shaped like a perfect factor of 90. And you recall your maths teacher making you list all the factors of 90. Something times 90, something times 45, something times 30, something times 18, something times 15, and finally something times 10. Interesting, right? Oh well, time to get to work past the broom. So, Glass 90 Sweeper, normal Sudoku rules apply. In addition, Minesweeper rules apply as follows. Numbers in circled cells reveal the number of mines, which are the factors of 90, that are in neighbouring cells horizontally, vertically and diagonally, not including the circle itself, so a maximum of eight cells. All such circles are provided, and here's a little warning, in other words, there's a juicy negative constraint on non-circled cells. So there we go. That is the puzzle. Now, there is a clue as to who set this, although I've only found that out today by asking around. And the clue is the maths teacher. And this was set by our favorite math teacher, uh, Rocky Roa, an American math teacher who has set some of the most excellent puzzles. Now, I don't know if I've got to solve a Rocky Roa on the channel before. Um, it's possible Simon has bagged them all. I'm not sure about that, but I'm certainly going to have a go at this. Now, those factors of 90 are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 9. So those are the numbers. What we're saying is, if there is a number in this cell, 
because it's got a circle on it, that means that for this cell, of these eight digits, that number of them will be one, two, three, five, six, or nine. So there could be could be all eight, because you could fit five of them in there, another three in there. There's no reason they all have to be different. Um, obviously, in the corners, there's a reduced number of possibles, but uh, only four, seven, and eight, four, seven, and eight are not factors of ninety in this puzzle. Well, in life as well. So I'm going to give it a go. Do try it on the link below the video. Um, I'm going to give it a go now. Let's see how we get on. Let's get cracking. How do we go about this? I mean, I, I almost can't believe that this puzzle has been created with no given digits. It's ridiculous to me to, to think that we can solve this logically. And yet, Rocky Rower has set it and therefore we can. Now look, these there are three cell centers. They've got to be helpful. They've got to be surrounded by the eight other digits that aren't that one. So maybe, yeah, look, there are six different digits that could be in those cells that are factors of 90. If that was a six, if they all were in those cells, well, that contradicts itself because six is one of those factors of 90 and there would only be five in those cells. So I think any time a central cell in a box has a circle, I think it's got to be a five. Five is one of those factors of 90 and the other three, the other five, one, two, three, six and nine must sit around it. So I think that's our starting point. I'm certain that's right now. How are we going to do this? I think I am going to color cells that are factors of 90. Let's go green. Yeah, that still shows up fine. Okay, I want to make sure the circles are showing up because they're obviously going to be vital. Um, now, unfortunately, five's a start, but it doesn't tell us anything about the eight cells around them because they could still be the same eight Sudoku digits. Uh, Okay, so let's look at the corners. The corners obviously can't be more than three. Uh, they have to be at least one because there's no zeros in Sudoku. So they're all one, two, or three. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, lovely. Okay, right. Perimeter digits are also constrained. You know, this one, as we saw, could have up to eight. But this one can only have up to five. It's got a five in the box, so that is one, two, three, or four. And look at this one, same deal. It's got a five in the row this time. So that is only one, two, three, or four. This one can only be one, two, three, four, or five. And look, we've now got a quadruple of one, two, three, four. So that is a five as well. That's gonna put another five in one of those cells. And in one of those, now can it be here? If that was a five, all of these would be green. Actually, yes, sorry, this is this is vital. Let's color that five green and all the cells around it. We now know something useful in the puzzle. So in fact, these two have to be six and nine because they're the other two digits in the column. Eight and seven are gonna be up here. I'm gonna find another color for non factors of nine digits. Let's go orange. And those are the things that can't, that don't contribute to these totals. Okay. Now I was wondering, can all these be green? No, 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 they can't. Look, I can make these corner cells green because whether they're one, two or three, they're factors of 90. I can't do the same with these because one of them's a four and one of them isn't. Um, but if these were all green because this was a five and would be green as well, then you can't fit the three orange digits, four, seven and eight into box seven here. So that cannot be five. So we can actually place the five here, color it green and do nothing else because we know two digits around it. I mean, 
interestingly, maybe three of the digits around that are going to be orange, but I'm going to need a lot more information. Now, what about this? This can't be a three because that would be too many cells becoming green in the box. Again, can't have seven green cells in any box, row or column. So that's not three. If it's a one, one, two, three, four, five, then this is a domino of green and orange. If it is a two, then these are both orange. Oh no, hang on. If it's a one, one of these is green. Actually, that may that they may both be orange then, and this be orange. Yeah, one of these has to be a four. Oh, um, no, I don't know. Oh, okay. How do we move on? What about this? These two on the southern perimeter of the grid look interesting to me. Again. Well, I mean, again, actually, they can't be five because they're both in a column with a five now. So it's a one, two, three, four, triple. Oh, look, we can put five in by regular Sudoku right here. That five, however, is not circled. Therefore, these are not all green. Can't really use that, but I can put another five in. And one more in one of those two. So let's try and remember to keep colouring as I go. I'm sure I'll forget again those five can't all be green or that would have a circle around it. Mm, okay, what should I be looking at next? This cell's already got four around it. Oh, and it's green. Oh, lovely. I think that's a winner. Um, it's already got four cells that are green around it. The maximum is eight, it can't be five. So it's four, six, seven or eight, but it's green. And all green cells are not four, seven or eight because they're the non factors. So that is a six. So that makes this a nine and this a six. And that's a surprise that I could get digits like that, but I don't think it's gonna help much. One, two, three, so three more of these are green and one is orange. Oh, maybe there's a relation between these two now. Yes, if this is going to be a one, then one of these, th oh, but it could be that one. Um, if that was a one, one of these three is green. This one is then, I don't know whether it's seeing just one there. Oh, well, this is already at least three. Look, it can see three green cells, so it's not one or two. Um, this one could still be four. If it was four, oh, it can't be one anymore because it can already see two. Can it, if it was two, this would be, if this was a two, these two would be orange and this would have to be a one and this couldn't have an existence. So that's not a two. So we've got a three, four pair. So that's not a three. Right. Um, now, if this was a one, these two would be orange. So in fact, that would be four. That's not possible, I don't think. If this is a one, that has to be orange. So it has to be four. That's also orange and that can't be four. So that is not a one, that's a two. That makes this one a one. Now, does it tell me what this is? No, I don't think it does. Because if it's a three, one of those is green. No, if it's a three, those are the two greens around the two. So that becomes orange and that becomes green. But if it's a four, they're both green and that's still a two. So I can't 
use that. Now, if this is a three, these are both orange, uh, the one works. If it's a four, one's green and one orange. Yes, the one still works. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's get rid of ones from here. Now we've got a one there and get rid of a two from that one. Um, I don't see how I can disambiguate these yet. Ah, hang on. In this box, there are three greens already, uh, four greens already marked. And one of these is green. So that is five greens. So one of these is green and one is orange. Don't think this can be a four. Oh no, it, it could be. No, that's nonsense. Um, oh, I don't know. What can we do? One of these, this is a sort of domino. I'm going to mark it yellow for now. It's, I don't know. One is green and one is orange out of that, just because of the maths of what surrounds that one. Maybe yellow's a stupid colour, I don't know. Um, okay, I'll mark it purple for a domino of one each. There we go. Now, how could, yeah, that, I don't see how to rule that down. What about this? Either two or three of these are green. If three of them are green, which seems like a lot, then this is a two. That's definitely a four. And that could be one, two, three, and one of those. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, how do we how do we unpick this problem? What's this? It's already seeing two. It can't be five or six. It can't. It can only see a maximum of six cells. So it's two, three, or four. Um. Oh, if this was two, all of these would be orange. And although that might work for boxes one and four, it won't work with this domino, which includes another orange, because there are only three oranges in each column. So it is not a two. It's three or four. It's already got two of them. Most of these are orange. Or, well... Sorry, there could be two green and two orange amongst them. Um, I don't know how to use that. I'm missing something here. I'm missing something probably very obvious. One of those can be a two. One of those is green and one's orange. That's a bit like another domino, although it's diagonal. Now around here, one of those is orange and the other two are green. No, one is green and the other two are orange. So that can still be three or four, can it? Yes, it can. One, yeah, that works for either. Okay, so I need to find something else. Maybe let's let's have another proper look at this corner. If that was three, I was thinking that was the most restricted. Well, it would make that one. Is that a problem around here? Oh, this is a five. Good God, wake up. They're all, no, they're not all green because it's not a circled five. Wake down. Right, must concentrate on what's in a circle and what's not. And especially on what is in circles. Um, now... This is at least two. So one of these at least is green. So this can't be two anymore. Okay, that's fair enough. Now, if that's a three, they're all green. This becomes a four and that becomes orange. which I think would have to be a seven in that case. That does look possible, but if it's a two, 
Now, if it's a two, there's a lot more freedom. This could still be a four or a three, I think. Uh, do they always make this orange? Maybe if that's a th if that's a three, they're all green. This is a four. That becomes orange. Yes. So if it's a two, it could be those two. In which case, this is a three. They're all marked already, and that does become orange. If it's a two, and it's that one and that one, that's a three, and that's orange. If it's a two, and it's that one and that one that are green, this is orange and is a four, and that's orange again. I think every possibility makes this cell orange. Let me just check this again, because this is important. If this works, it's brilliant. Um, if that's a two, there are three arrangements of two cells that could be green. If it's those two, making this one a three, it's seeing all three green already. If it's those two, then this is already seeing four green cells, and that must be orange. And if it's those two, this must be a three because it's green, it's seeing them all, and this is orange. That is orange. What a bizarre, what a brilliant setup. If that's deliberate, that's extraordinary. Now, what can I do now? Can this really be a four, which is actually the most likely thing to have four greens around it? But then this becomes a three and this becomes a two. Um, that three, oh, it doesn't even tell me which of those is green and which is orange. So this certainly can be a four. It can't be, or maybe it could even be an eight. I mean, once it's orange, it is four, seven or eight. That is the nature of orange, but Oh, I just don't know. Right. Could they all be green? I think they could. So possibly the brilliance of finding this orange cell is going to evaporate in a nothingness of uselessness. Okay, let's think again then. Maybe there's some negative constraint somewhere that now we know about the fives in the center of boxes. Um, this is one or three, but... So if that was three and these were all green, it doesn't really affect anything down here. I mean, that makes this two. But we've seen that this can still be three or four if that's two. Maybe this one is more constrained than I'm realizing. Can it really be two? If it was two, I just don't know. If this was three, those would both be orange. If this was three, yeah, those would both be orange. And this couldn't be three. And it can only see a maximum of three now. So that would become two. If this is three, that's two. Then we've got three and four here. They're both green. I'm probably making this far more complicated. How would this be two? That would be three. Both greens would be here because it would be surrounded by oranges in box seven. With no where the three oranges were. I can't see, I cannot see how that's, how that's a problem. Maybe this six, should I be working on this more? One, two, three, done. Oh. If these can't both be green, making all of these, or they can't all be orange. Right, this six, what's that telling me? One, two, three, four done. Of these remaining four cells, two are green and two are orange. Does that tell me something about this? 
either none or one of those two because of the one are green. That's quite an unhelpful way of looking at it. Maybe let's go back to this. If that's a three, I don't know which is more unhelpful. Ah, there is an orange in one of those purples and there's an orange there. There has to be at least one green in those two because there can't be two more oranges in box one. So that gets us up to the three at least. Now the only way for this to stay at three is for these two to be orange, which makes one of these orange, that's orange. They're all green at the top. Oh, it still just works, just. Why doesn't it break one way or the other? Um, maybe I'm missing some regular Sudoku or something. Something very ordinary to get me back into the swing of this. Because I've stumbled here. I've stumbled badly. Now, this is seven or eight, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Look, I've got a two, three, four, triple, obviously. Nine, six, five, and one. This is seven or eight. This is red, orange, therefore, not red. Um, so, one of these is green. Now the six has got... One, two, three, four, five. One of these is green. That's not the best outcome. This can still be three with a gr with an orange there or four with a green there. <sighs> what is the resolution to this? So down here we have six, seven, eight, and nine are possible. Two of them are six and nine, which are green. That's not very relevant. One of these is seven or eight. Now this, can this be four? Actually, yes, it could. They could all be green. That would be Ah, that would stop that being three. This can't be four. If that's four now, these all have to be green. And that would have to be four. So that's not four. Wow. So now I've got a two, three pair and this is four. Um, which, no, I've put the wrong color in. It makes it orange. So now this has to be two with two greens up there. Yes, and we're underway again. Whew, that took some doing. Three there. Um, if that's green, this is orange, that, because that was our purple domino. Now, that one's green, and now it's got to be have three greens around it. They've all got to go in there. That makes this one orange to preserve the one's correct status. That is therefore a four. What's happening to my numbers? There we go, four. That's a three, and that makes it green because that is one of the factors of 90. This one becomes orange because of the two. This one becomes green because of the three. We need three oranges in the column, so that one is orange and is therefore a four. I love how this works. It's so neat. Seven or eight there. Now, I'm tempted to colour the ones we dealt with, but that would actually just lead me down a path of colouring destruction. Right, five greens around that six. We can put a sixth one in the remaining cell. That four has been done right. That two has been done right. This can't be eight anymore. Could it really be seven with greens all the way round? It just could at the moment. In fact, this cell here is green because we have three oranges in the row already. This is genius. I love the way this puzzle works. It's so confusing and yet revealing. Very interesting. Um, nine, six, five. Right, that is seven or eight. Two, in fact, must go here now. Oh, this can't be four. I'm such a dummy because there's a four in the box. There we go. I totally ignored a one in a box yesterday for hours and hours, and I 
am very embarrassed about that. So doing the same thing today does me no good at all. Right, six, nine, one, and three to go in there. That's a six, eight, nine triple now. Now this is seven. So everything around it is green. That's very helpful. Okay, so they're all green. That's orange to make up the numbers in the box, and it's an eight. These must both be orange now for the row. And in fact, that one for the box. That is therefore where the eight goes Oops, there. Six, nine pair around it. Two must be here. We've got a one, three pair. A 6-9 pair here, or 1-3 pair here. Now, what about this? 4 or 7? Oh, well, I don't know. But I do know that it means that all these three are the same. How peculiar. Ah, but this 5, I must... Oh, no, it's not got a circle. Ah, it's not got a circle. Negative constraint time. Lovely. It's got 4 green, 5 green around it. If this was orange, that would have to have a circle. So this is green. And now I've just worked out from this four or seven that all these are the same. So they're all green. This is actually the higher number, the seven. Four there. These are all orange because we need three orange in the row. Those are the only three orange for the box. And now we are flying along, cooking with gas. And probably grinding to a juddering halt. That's orange for the column. Um, I might as well fill in this chocolate teapot triple here. And that's four or seven. Now, what is this number? It is one, two, three, five, six, or nine, and it's not five. It's already seeing three green. Oh, hang on, I'm confused now. It's either three or six. Therefore, it can't be four or five. So these are all the same again. Well, they've got to be orange because there's already five green in the row. Wow, okay, so we just suddenly get all of row five's oranges done at once. We've suddenly got all of column five's oranges done. It's weird how this unfolds. Oh, look, that's seven. It's been staring up at that cell for a long time. So we get those in, eight, six, five, four, three. This is one or nine. Can't use the negative constraint on that number. Um, right, four, seven, eight, five. Mm, I'm hoping I'm not gonna have to use the negative constraint again. Ah, this one cannot be three anymore because it's got an orange around it. So that's a one. And this is a domino of one green and one purple. Uh, one green and one orange. So I'll make it purple. So that includes the third green for column eight. That may, uh, the third orange for column eight. Slow down, Mark. So one of those, but we don't know which one. Ah, we do know that this uh, four, seven, eight form a sort of mini puzzle here. So that must be four, because it's got eight and seven in the column. That must be seven. That must be eight. So seven in this box must be in one of these cells, because they're the only ones that aren't green. So that's got to be a five, seven pair. What a weird pairing somehow to come across. Doesn't really help either, but it's a surprise. Um, these two are from three, six, and nine, which are the remaining factors to put in the column. Oh, so two in row five now has to be here. Again, that just doesn't feel totally sound. I mean, it is right. I just don't quite know how we got there. Um, and I can't decide where two goes in row four. That's very weird too. Right, three there, one or nine. Okay, this now. Why didn't I fill this in? I worked out that those were all orange, so that has to be a three. Um, so that 
fixes the one three pair down here. I don't think I can do anything with this six nine pair till I get help from above. I don't mean divine help, I mean higher up in the grid. Um, so that is one or nine. But these two, this is one or nine as well. Ah, three, yes, that can't be three anymore. That's the salient point. So three must go in there and the whole row is suddenly fixed. Nine, one, six, nine are resolved. That becomes a three. We've got a four, eight, seven, triple there. So one and six to place here. And these two are two and nine in some order. Now, am I missing a big negative constraint somewhere? I probably am. I don't see what it is though. Not quite that. This is one, two or nine. Well, I'm sorry if you can see one of those. I can't yet. Two, three, five. I don't have many circles left to work with. This is a huge area of circleless real estate actually. I don't know quite what that means. If I'm really going to have to just do classic Sudoku, or no, it probably means I'm going to have to find negative constraints all over the grid. Hopefully not that many more though. Don't need much more help to push us towards us towards a solution. One of those is two, two, five, three. One of those is one. Um. Ah, let's use a technique from some other puzzles, like four, eight, and seven are all looking at this cell. So it cannot be another orange cell. That is green. Um, seven, four, they haven't been resolved yet though. Right, is that any use? Not sure. Oh, maybe it is. If I knew that was green, I could establish this number because of the negative constraint, but I don't. Or this one. I think I just need a bit more information to get any negative constraints out. Um, and of course, I must remember to look in the orange cells. That couldn't have been a seven, for instance. Sadly, I already knew it couldn't be a seven. Ooh, this, no, nearly, not quite. Oh, okay, so. Feeling a bit stuck again. Am I missing any more eight, four, seven mixes? Um, Five. Oh, this four. Look, I can fill in this cell. It is requiring four greens around it. There we go. I've missed that for ages. Sorry, four. You are dead to me. Now, orange there. That means we've finished the boxes, greens and oranges. Now, that was going to help me with this. Only if it was green was it going to help me with that. As it is, it doesn't. But it must be four because it's the last one in the column and box. Now, one of these is eight for the row. One of these is seven because they're not green cells. No, that's not necessarily true because that could be seven. Oh, fascinating. Again, if I'm missing some constraint like that it's irritating but now I don't even have circles reaching diagonally into the remaining white cells only that one for that single corner piece so I'm probably going to have to find ah oh, look there it is that look at that hiding away down here this cell cannot be a three because it's got three greens around it and it's not in a circle. So that's a one. Is that really going to fix things? One and six there. Six, five, one, nine, four. So we've got three or seven here, two, seven or eight here, two, three or eight here. This needs to have 
Uh, either three or two in one of the, either three there or two there. That doesn't resolve it. This is six, eight. One. Oh, this can't be an eight because it's green. That doesn't quite mean that that definitely is an eight. Ah, it does mean that eight is in one of these two cells for box two. Um, we still need three oranges there. One in one of those cells, one in one of those, one in one of those. Oh, I'm going to have to find another negative constraint item. Well, Rocky Road did say they were they were interesting, and I don't disagree with him. That is six or nine. Um, just by Sudoku, given this four, eight, seven, triple, this must be two, six or nine. I don't think any of those are resolved by the negative constraint or those. See these five sevens? Oh, that's interesting, yes. One of these is orange and one is green for the row. I think this does work. No, it doesn't. That means there are six around this cell and four around that one. So I cannot, cannot get those resolved. How frustrating is that? And the answer is very. Oh, what am I missing? Hats off to you if you're spotting these negatives quicker than me, because my goodness, I find it tough. So one, that's six or nine. This is one, six or nine. I don't see how to resolve one or the other. Six. Well, if it was six, they couldn't both be green, but there's no reason that has to be six. One of those is six. Eight, seven, five, four, two, one. That's three, six, or nine. Hmm. That's not very. It's not very useful. Um. Two, or three there, and one of these is an eight. Come on, Mark. Yes, yeah, so here it was something that, I don't know, it wasn't even something I'd have been looking at at all. Um, struggling badly now, as you can see. Now, four actually is in one of those cells. So we have got a lot of restrictions on numbers up here. Eight, four, five, one, two, and three are all quite constrained. The trouble is six, seven, and nine just aren't. Seven obviously has to be in one of those to be outside the green cells. Um, Just don't know. So if that was, oh, maybe there's some sort of problem up here. That can't be three and two. We know that. Well, it couldn't be given that anyway, but one is green. So maybe this is more constrained than I'm seeing. Or maybe the fact that there are two oranges there. No, we know there's one orange there. Crumbs, Rocky Rower, how are you doing this? You are messing with my head. Five, we've done that. It's, the numbers here are just too high or low to be relevant to the negative constraint. We've ruled out those five and seven as mattering. They're too high and low. 
six, eight or nine here, which is not a very useful restriction at all. Oh, no, I was wondering if there was only one place for one in this row, but that's not the case. If that was a four. Oh my goodness, that's it, isn't it? If this was a four, that would be one of the oranges. This would, one of these would be green for the one, and the four would need a circle. There it is. Wow. I mean, I don't see that as easy. Admittedly, it shouldn't take me as long as it did, but it really is not easy. That's three. That's green now. This must be orange, therefore it must be eight. And finally, surely we can finish off now. The four must go there, must be able to place the last eight and seven. Eight goes there. Actually, no, seven goes in one of these cells. And we've got a deadly five, seven pattern that we're gonna have to resolve in some hideous way, no doubt. I think the rest of these are all green. That's where the last four goes. That's a two now. Six and nine. Surely I'm not going to have to find another negative constraint because my goodness, I've proved I'm not great at that. Two, five, eight, four, seven. Such a clever puzzle, though. Oh, look, this is either a six or a nine by Sudoku. Eight, three, four, one in the column, seven, two, five. That forms a pair, so this is a one. Um, must be. And a three. Oh, yeah, the other way to look at that was where does three go in this row, so... That was a slightly more straightforward way. 629 triple tells us where the one is in case I need help, as I do with finding even simple things in this puzzle. Six and two there. There we go. Now that's a nine. That's a six. Now we're closing in on this final deadly pattern. And we are about to get there. I'm a bit scared about it. Right, how are we going to solve these five sevens? We, we know it's not that. Oh, there it is. That can't be a five because those greens are f five of them. That's just brilliant. What a brilliant puzzle. I mean, Rocky could easily have made it quite a lot easier by making this one a five and putting a circle around it. But no, he forces us the hard way. He's basically a math and Sudoku genius. And that is the solution to this puzzle. It's taken me a long time. Oh, that's not quite the solution to this puzzle. Um, that is, let's check it. Phew. It's taken me a long time, but I have enjoyed every minute of that. That is brilliant. What a, what a genius construction. And that is just one of about 60 or more secret Santa puzzles. Incredible. Thank you so much. Glad I chose that one. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that. Let's, let's see if we can find a few more from the pile. Maybe, maybe we'll get some recommendations. I don't quite know how that's going to work, but um, certainly entertaining stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Oh, no, I will say a quick happy birthday for yesterday to Eula's dad, who I forgot to mention yesterday. She mentioned him in the comments a couple of days ago to one of Simon's videos. And in case he's still watching, uh, we do wish him a happy birthday. And bye for now.